I can't have. So that's your argument, that I just don't know what procreation means. You, you obviously saw the issue I'm raising. Uh, the issue is that gray area, you see. At the time that the mother is making decision whether to uh, conceive a child, let's just pretend that's the decision that's being made, but when it is the decision, she's making a decision with something that's not a gray area. It is absolutely a part of her body. Now, you, the, the principle we're working on is that you can't make decisions for other people, right? But when she makes a decision to conceive, that's her body. You see? That, that's the, you guys do not understand or even attempt to sort out any of this so-called gray area. And I don't see it quite as gray as you because I know that categories are fuzzy at the edge so-called gray so like you said the baby's inside the mother when she's deciding making her decisions by the time the baby's born and it's an independent thing and you want to say it's you know it's come into existence it's a new creature and nobody can make decisions for it right but that wasn't true when it was an ovum so when it's born, we have the, the, the question of who should make the life and death decisions. You don't seem to realize it's still somewhat of a gray area for human uh, infants because they don't have uh, a mature consciousness. I would say they have a kind of consciousness, but most of you all would, would say no, it's not the new consciousness. It can't even move. It obviously can't take care of itself. It has been ejected from the womb but it still requires uh, you know, a nest and parents or some mature adults to uh, provide, right? It's still dependent, it's not independent yet. But I think, you know, obviously, uh, I believe it has a kind of consciousness and that you, we have obligations to it. But sometime after that birth, it will make its own life and death decisions, right? So at the point that the mother is making a decision about what to do with the life, it's part of the mother's body. Now you guys want to say, oh, but it's going to become an independent creature. Well, of course, not necessarily because of mortality, but let's just say, yeah, it's going to become an independent creature. Um, you do know that every action you take affects other independent creatures indirectly, right? So it's the whole, you can't directly, you know, decide for other people and be the one that's the final arbiter for them. But of course you do take actions that have impacts on the world. You buy goods that mean, you know, they're going to keep working people in slave labor prices to get you those goods, and so on and so forth. Now, unless you're going to make an argument about every single indirect action, right? Because your desire for a pair of shoes that's being built somewhere by people that are being raised to support families that go straight into this corporate system, your need for that shoe is one of the reasons they have more kids to send into the factories. So... I don't see how you're going to escape that by you going on, you're causing the procreation of the species. Except for that, as far as it comes for you, you've chosen with your body not to procreate. That's your personal choice, right? To not procreate. And they've decided to procreate so that they can send their children in a few years into a factory to make shoes for you. You, of course, blame them. And I only blame them if that's what they actually do, if they instead uh, raise that kid to be a revolutionary and change the legal system and political system in their country, that I would like better. But all of that, of course, is a tangent, as is a bunch of pictures of a pregnant woman. Like, that's really what you think your argument is. It's like, well, I'm talking to somebody that doesn't see, 
Yeah, no. What you illustrated was the opposite. Did you get my point? At the time of... You showed a late-stage pregnancy, didn't you? Because there is no gray area about the ovum being a part of the mother's body. And it's an ovum when she decides to... Uh, to conceive. For to be fertilized. And after that sort of happens on its own, huh? So the decision she made was clearly at a point where it was her body. The fact that through time it may live and become an independent creature is interesting. And so when it is an independent creature, it'll have this right of independent creatures. You can't assert it as a right of an independent creature before it even is an independent creature. And then assert you know what that right is. And then you're going to come back while that being is a part of the mother's body, the ovum, and you're going to tell her what to do. It's just a big... argument around and getting into a woman's body and telling her what to do with it. Because it's going to be different. So you could tell her what to do with every one of her eggs, I guess. You and the pro-lifers. Yeah, see, fanaticism is, is a problem. Um, I also watched Gary's video. It's just, you know, it's just ridiculously insulting to, you know, I'm getting flipped off and called child molester and you guys are worried that I make an argument a certain way. So rude. Yeah, it's rude to make an argument that makes you feel like you're wrong. So you make them a bunch of insults. You know, but, um, you know, Gary talks about how preposterous my, my point is, and it's so subtle and it's weird and what, you're playing games. Uh, sorry guys, it's preposterous to want to end the human race. So, if you're going to argue from which sounds more preposterous, then no wonder you're blocking me. Oh, but not you. You're just going to start flipping me off. Yeah, well, uh, too weak for the argument. Emotionally weak. <laughs>